Hi, my name is Aaron Linsdale. I'm a polar explorer and motivational speaker. It's adventure day! Today I'm going to tell you seven more things I would definitely not bring on a long distance backpacking trip. There are tons of things that you were sold constantly saying you need this item to have a better, more pure experience backpacking. I'm here to tell you right now, having thousands of miles of backpacking experience under my belt, <laughs> really, if I could carry all my stuff that I needed for backpacking in a little, little grocery sack, I would totally do it, okay? The whole goal of going and experiencing this, you have two options. Yeah, I'm thinking just two options. You could go as light as you can or as heavy as you can. Which do you think will be more enjoyable? Light? Heavy. Heavy, light. Heavy. Right. Trust me, the whole theory of what you bring is completely based on your fear of what you will be without. So, let's talk about those things. I'm looking at my list here. The very first thing not to bring on a long distance backpacking trip is an instrument. Violin. Or a, I'm strumming, right, okay. I'm totally not musically inclined, and I fully admit that. But when I'm out there backpacking and some guy or gal strumming their guitar or whatever, ah, you know, it, it may be a great experience for you. And you, you, your friends may be totally into it. But there are, uh, consider, other people who are out there who want to get away from it all. And yeah, you, you of course, you'll probably run into people unless you go to like, Greenland on October like I did and then you won't see anyone I promise you that but just remember that When you're taking this musical instrument to the outdoors, it, it could get possibly damaged You know that that's on you. You've got to carry it for the whole time So when you get sick of it Either you're gonna smash your guitar or burn it or or your piccolo or your violin or I don't know Maybe you have a piano who knows just remember that it's not totally worth it. Trust me on this one. The number two item, deodorant. Ugh! Aaron, you say deodorant is number two? Or is it two or two? I don't know. Look, you're going to be doing this. Look, you're going to smell. That's just the way it is. Believe me, unless you're able to find a creek or stream and bathe and scrub and totally clean up, you couldn't smell and that's just the way it works. So on any backpacking trip where I've gone where it's not super freezing, super freezing is like minus 40 to me, by the way. So if even if the water is really cold, you can only just kind of scrub and clean up. But after a couple hours of backpacking, you're just going to smell. That's just the way it is. So I've been with friends like, oh man, I've got to have this deodorant. Dude, I smell, you smell. Okay, just kind of wash things down keep the stank down but the deodorant is very tempting plus deodorant attracts bears because it's a scent and it's actually a very strong scent to them are you really interested in attracting bears to your camp and your food in your location no bears don't care if you smell if you stink they're like Ooh. <laughs> but if ooh, what is that scent yum yeah trust me Bears are attracted. The third thing, speaking of that, number three, don't bring your pet on big trips and into the national parks on backpacking trips. And I'll tell you why. And there's at least two reasons. One, a lot of national parks completely ban pets in the backcountry. You can bring Fido or Rover or Fluffy or whatever, and they can run around the parking lot, but they can't go on the trail. And the reason for this is in the national parks, at least, is that that animal becomes a predator in the environment and, oh, my dog wouldn't do anything, but just their scent actually messes up other animals out there. Plus, not everybody's totally awesome with you with your little poop bag on the trail. Like, oh, I'll clean it up later. You won't, trust me. Just, just leave Fido at home. It's a great experience, but then you gotta take care of Fido. What if Fido 
hurts her paw, what, what, you know, whatever. Trust me on this one, leave Fido at home. The next thing, interestingly, about uh, Fido digging up things, number one, two, three, four. Number four? Item number four is the camp trowel. Now in Boy Scouts, we were taught that you need to bring this little camp trowel so when you do the number two duty, poopy poopy, <laughs> you're supposed to dig what's called a little bit of a cat hole, four to six inches or thereabouts. Do your business in there and bury your toilet paper and your poo poo and then cover it up because no one wants to see it, no one to smell it, nothing. But you've got to carry that camp trowel and I mean, I've done thousand plus miles backpacking. I've never needed a camp trowel. Oh, Aaron, you leave your poo poo on the ground? No, that's disgusting. Now, do the bears bury their poo? No. Do the coyotes? No. Do any of the other animals bury their poo other than your cat in your cat box? Pretty much not. But humans, because you don't want to be disgusting, you do that. And you know how easy it is to dig a hole? Get your trekking poles, get a stick, scratch a hole, you get a rock, whatever, and there's nothing to it. And then you can leave the rock, you can leave the stick, or you use your trekking poles anyway. So that camp trowel is huge weight for you. And I'm sure you'll find a reason, Aaron, I survived with my camp trail. Trust me, I never bring a camp trail. Thousand plus miles, never had a problem. Follow the proper procedure. So camp trail, ditch the weight. Ha. Next, cookware. Okay, cookware. Ah, I love my Yeti yuppie mug. Awesome. But would I ever backpack with it? No, I would never backpack with it. I ran into these two ladies in the Sierras one time backpacking with friends and they carried a cast iron skillet for like 20 plus miles. Now, as I was walking up, I was smelling the food and I'm like, oh, that smells so good as I'm eating my fifth bar of the day. <laughs> But I asked, oh, what is that you're cooking? Oh, we've got these finely chopped onions and all this. But I looked down like, but you're car carrying a cast iron skillet? Wow, that's how we love to cook. Now, whoa, okay, you're going long distance backpacking. If that's your thing and that's what you do and that's a critical part of the experience, get a horse, get a mule. I know it's tempting to carry all the latest cookware. Get a titanium spork. Not, not a plastic one, those break. Titanium's a tool. Get a titanium pot or aluminum pot or whatever and get a little stove. That's all you need. I've done thousands of miles with that. In Antarctica, that's what I had. I had a little heat exchanger. Antarctica, in three months, no problem. Greenland in the Arctic, same thing. Don't bring tricked out cookware. It is a problem. It's just extra weight. Trust me, you're gonna get sick of cleaning things. Don't bring the extra crazy cookware. And <laughs> the next thing, uh, let's see, one, I can't keep losing track here. One, two, three, four, five, six. The number six is an ax or a saw. Now, if you're planning to build a Grizzly Adams log cabin in the middle of the woods, that's great, okay, but are you really gonna do that? No. What are you going to cut down? Now, the, if you wanna bring a saw, get one of those little uh, commando wire saws. I've actually used that. And that's the only thing you won't cut your hand off with. But you know, unless you're a woodsman and you're cutting down trees, don't plan on doing that. Just break sticks, find what's local, not what's local, but what's dead. That's the classic thing. Don't go chopping down the forest. Trust me, you won't use it. And the seventh item, don't bring a freaking crazy knife. I know it's tempting. I mean, if you're doing the survivalist thing, totally. I mean, here, let me, uh, let me pull up some knives here. Oh yeah. The Seabet, or no, Seabert custom design bench made knife. I love this knife. This thing is incredible. 
it's got a full tang and everything but a lot of times for, and, and it's got holes so you can put it in lashing for survival style travel this is an incredible knife the uh the cpm whatever 530v steel it's incredible and you know you just gotta be careful because you cut your hand open you're in real trouble this is heavy do you really need that on long distance backpacking no and do you really need the rambo knife <laughs> no you don't now i love my k bar becker bk7 totally love it i mean this thing see it's all scuffed up i've chopped logs with battening bop 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 with this but do you need this huge knife on a backpacking trip no trust me you don't let me put this away without cutting my hand open on youtube i love this knife i've done plenty of truck stuff with it i do carry a little little mini baby knife this is generally all you need for backpacking because in here somewhere is my sharpening tool yeah i've got my sharpening stick and all this but really you can totally get away with this tiny remora knife that's all you need i've got another style survival knife very simple i also carry this guy a lot of times Ooh, that's illegal no it's not it's spring assist and even if i was who cares love it this is all i bring I and mean, this is a zero tolerance knife i've got my becker got the little remora got my bench made fixed blade i got knives coming out of my ears but when you're going long distance you just need a really small knife keep it sharp and that's generally all you're gonna need you're not gonna be chopping down trees and making shelters just doesn't happen trust me i speak from experience so this is my list of seven more things to definitely not take with you on a backpacking trip just because it's overkill and it's extra weight i've actually carried this thing with me on a big backpacking trip and every step of the way i thought man why did i bring this this is like a pound and a half never used it will i use it for other things yes do i use it for base camp camping absolutely but for long distance again a straw weighs heavy my name is Aaron Linsdow. I'm a polar explorer and motivational speaker. Please like and comment on my video. Check out the links below to everything I've talked about in case you do want to buy them anyway. Hey Aaron, you are clueless. That's right. Hit the little arrow just next to the video. Hit the drop down. The links are available. Takes you right to the place where you can buy them. Please support me on Venmo, PayPal, and Patreon. And uh, I had uh, one other video about five other things not to bring with you on a long distance backpack check that out link below thank you very much for watching